Hey everyone, uh, Roy from Brad here. Today I am with Ian the Hurricane Heinisch, ranked number 10 in the world for middleweight class UFC. Mm -hmm. uh, soon to be world champion here, middleweight class. And we're talking about <clears throat> mobility, recovery, some of his training methods and what we can kind of get from him on how to succeed uh, in this field. So a lot of people out there uh, looking to train similar to you, uh, you work your butt off every day, uh, you gotta recover fast, you need a lot of mobility in your shoulder, your hips, everywhere else. Mm -hmm. So what have you found to be like some of the most successful uh, training methods to get you where you are today? Um, yeah, I mean, for someone out there starting MMA, you know, consistency is the most important key. And training hard is really important, but also training smart. And you got to stay up on your recovery. You know, uh, our, our uh, philosophy here is you're never overtrained, you're under recovered. Nice. So you got to you got to focus on your recovery, man. When when things are, are feeling good, stay on the recovery because that's just the maintenance phase. And if you let it get too far, then you're going to have to sit out then you're gonna have to take some time off training. And like I said, consistency is key to get me where I'm at today. I stay consistent, the people that do stay consistent, they have the best results. You know, at least five, six days a week, you know, I gotta focus on my recovery, I gotta stretch, I'm doing yoga, I'm doing PT. And you know, the great thing about Rad Roller is I can carry it around with me wherever I go. It's in my car, I have a set in my car, I have a set at the gym here. And so if I'm feeling something a little tweaked or something weird, I just bust it out. When I first started training, I would let things get to where I was basically, the car was broke down. Yeah. And then I had to take a week or two off and get it fixed instead of just staying on top of the maintenance, you know, doing the oil change, getting the, the car tuned up constantly mm -hmm. so I can just continue my training and stay consistent. So based on your um, five, six days a week, do you have a, a favorite tool from Rad that you really find? One or two tools that you find that, uh, you know, without that, it would be really difficult to hone in on that recovery? Yeah, you know, I mean, it kind of just depends on how I'm feeling, what, what the training was looking like for that particular week. But I would say mostly I'm using the, the, the roller. I'm always rolling out. Uh, my hips get super tight, my IT band, and, and just my, my, the whole area right here, my quads, and definitely use the balls um, for my sub scap. Mm. As a boxer or just a fighter, you're always throwing them arms, so your sub scap's always gonna get super tight, so I usually get in there and I have some techniques, and then, of course, the rad rod, I mean, if anyone knows, if they kick all the time, your legs are super sore. You gotta yeah. roll them knots out, you gotta stay on top of that because if you don't, you're just not gonna heal, you're not gonna recover. And like I said, you're gonna, you're gonna have to take some time off out of the gym and, and that's when your, your opponent's growing and you're staying stagnant, so. Yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I know some people, some of my clients, uh, they'll, they'll say, well, I don't have that kind of time during the day. I'm mm -hmm. really busy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're not training every single day, but uh, they're yeah. training four or five times a week. Mm -hmm. They got the kids, they got, you know, house chores, they got a lot of traveling to do, they have work. Um, how much time do you, do you devote? Is it like a whole day or can anyone out there really do this every day without losing a lot of precious time in their life? You just have to make it part of your routine. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta, you gotta do it consistently for a month to make it a habit and make it part of your routine and you're gonna see huge results. Maybe not the first week or two weeks, but when you consistently do it, you're gonna feel your body recover quicker, you're gonna be used to doing it, and you're not gonna have that huge breakdown where things just get tightened up, and then you're going to a PT or a chiropractor, and they have to start from square one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, based on you know being on your feet all the time, mm -hmm. I gotta ask, um, do you do anything with your feet? And if so, I mean, you know, I kind of dabble in martial arts, so I'd love to get some tips from you. Yeah. Uh, I know you said rad rod around the, the legs and mm -hmm. uh, the rounds around the subs gap and the yeah. shoulder complex, but uh, do you do anything with your feet at all or, or no? You know, the feet and the hands really get no love and they're used the most. So yeah. you got to show them love. And yeah, I definitely love to just get on the mat or anywhere on the ground and you can just kind of roll back and forth and just continue to get more pressure. And you'd be surprised on how much that releases and it just feels really good. I definitely try to do that at least once a week. Nice. Yeah. It's funny that you say it's, it, it's not something you do often. It's only once a week. Yeah. <clears throat> but other people might be like, yeah. well, I do that like once a month. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, I mean, for me, it's, this is my job. You know, I train every day. I got to make sure my body's tuned up. Um, for someone who's not training every day or, you know, they're just hitting the gym regularly, um, but not, you know, it's not their job. They have a lot of other stuff going on. You know, I would just say use that as your cool down. Maybe get to the gym, stretch for five minutes, and then when you cool down, when those muscles are warm 
and uh, you know the blood's in there and the lactic acid and say you work legs you can really get in with the rad rod and just roll the quads out roll the calf out uh, get, sit down on the roller and just, and just kind of roll the, the glutes out and you know I, I believe that will really increase uh, your recovery time. Nice. So going to the opposite side now, I'm glad you mentioned uh, cool down. I was going to ask you, do you do anything for your warm up as far as self mouth fascial release to proactively enhance like joint range of motion, shoulder, hips, or anything like that? Or do you just do stretching and then go right into the octagon? Or um, well. We have this. We have a whole like plan. It's called Walk-In Series. Uh, we do it at Landau Performance. It's just basically uh, the first part's like a walking stretch. The second part is kind of like a, a mobility type thing. You're getting the legs uh, loose. You're doing like a turtle and doing the uh, hydro or uh, what are they called? Fire hydrants. Fire hydrants. Yep. There you go. Yeah, doing those just kind of get everything warm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we do before a fight. I would still do the walking series, but then obviously I'm gonna hit pads. I'm gonna hit tie pads, get my hips loose. I'm gonna grapple a little bit to just kinda, and I wanna blow my lungs out. So that's a little bit different for that, but every day for every practice, say for example, if I have three practices, I'm doing the walking series three times, so. Wow. So uh, going back to mobility, based on MMA and you know striking and kicking and, and all that, where do you find, where do you think most MMA fighters need more mobility or more recovery? For for almost everyone too, I feel like the, the hips in the IT band you carry a lot of stress in your hips. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly trying to stretch them and just and work them loose, getting a massage, making sure they get deep in there. And uh, shoulders too. Yeah. I mean shoulders, because I mean it, the one thing too about the hips, going back to the hips is that will protect your knee. And yeah. a lot of people have knee issues, not just fighters. And you know, you tear your knee, it's a big deal. Keep your hips loose, uh, protect your knees. And then, yeah, next thing, like I said, the shoulders are, are really important too. Rad rounds around the shoulder. Um, do you use anything for like your, your neck or upper, upper back, like thoracic spine? Um, yeah, I'll use the, the, the blue balls, I call them. The rad roller. The, yeah, yeah. The, and um, you know, I'll get that right here and just kind of oh, get nice. my arms going in and out, hug, roll side to side, let it go up and down. Um, Beautiful. If I could talk to a younger Ian right now, yeah. what would you tell him about training methods now that are pivotal to your success? And, and also the folks out there, mm -hmm. for people that are looking to uh, you know, get to a position that you're in of success, mm -hmm. um, what kind of advice could you give them or the former Ian? A lot of people mistake movement for progress and they're just chasing fatigue and you're not always progressing when you're just coming in here and just killing yourself. The, the sooner you can get a good recovery regimen, mm -hmm. I would get on that as soon as you can. That's just gonna prolong your career. You know, I've been doing yoga for a while. That's really helped a lot. And mm -hmm. obviously I've been with you guys for about five years, so that's helped. But definitely wanna implement a recovery regimen early and just train smarter, not harder.